I'm Diana. For those of you who are new to this channel, this Erin Keeps Twisting, hello. Today I am coming to bring you a video that it's been, I'm speaking on situations that have happened to me. Only my experiences. No one else is. I can't speak for anyone else. I'm not generalizing everyone. Just what I've gone through and my years of being on this earth. What I have been told by men and women, especially men, is that I am very intimidating. But I can't help that I'm very intimidating. I was raised by two men. My stepfather, my father, and then my stepfather had a whole bunch of brothers and cousins and uncles and stuff like that. So, and I was kind of a tomboy. Well, I still am a tomboy. And I was always watching everything they they did growing up. I was interested. And, um... <laughs> I remember when I was younger, my mother, she used to always, you know, put me in these frilly dresses and these knit dresses. They were beautiful, but they weren't me. I wanted to play. I wanted to be running, be out there. You know, have fun not being stuffed up in dresses that wasn't me so every other day I used to come home and I used to have hole in, holes in my stockings and my mother told me and I mean these were like knit stockings not them cheap little you know pantyhose these were like children rough and tough knit stockings and she's like how do you get the holes in those stockings you come home one more time with the holes in the stockings, I'm gonna beat you. So I'm like, oh. I'm like, oh, now nah, I can't play. So thank God for my stepfather, cause he was like, let her be who she's gonna be. Yeah, I'll surely take a day off from you and then a day off from these kids. If she does not want to wear the dresses and the stockings, do not force her. Let her be who she's going to be. And my mother was like, okay. I was like, oh, thank God. So I got to wear pants. I got to wear my Nikes. Oh, oh my goodness. It was like a magical day when I wore... I got to wear what I wanted to wear, which was pants, Nikes. You know, I was like, ah. my mother was a little upset. But then she was a little bit more upset because she was like, wait a minute. Now, this girl is tall and skinny and none of these like rainbow shops or any other shops was like, I could fit in. I was so small. I was like a size zero. And she had to more go into the gas and the gap you know, realm, the more higher end for my jeans, because I think I was like a size 30 or 28 or something like that, or 26. That was when I was a teen. <laughs> now I'm uh, 44 and I am a size 26. Yes, I am. <laughs> 126 pounds I weigh. Yes, I do. Don't know how, but I do. But anyway, back to the story. Um, so, once I was able to be me, I could run around. I used to fight with the boys. I used to, like, it was like, I was myself, I, you know, I, I really, the girls was cute and everything, and I had girlfriends, but it was like more so the boys, and then the boys used to always pick on me all the time, used to always want to fight me all the time, so I fought them back, I punched them, chased them, 
always i fought more boys i think i fought maybe three girls in my lifetime and maybe like 20 <laughs> boys it was always boys so <clears throat> that's who i was or am so when now that i'm an adult i can't it's like I'm still tomboyish. I still wear my sneakers. I still wear my jeans, you know, but I am girly. I was girly back then, but I was also a little tomboyish as well. But now that I'm an adult and I date men and I meet men, they say that I am intimidating because I can do everything, majority of everything some things a lot of things that men don't think that women can do like when it came to my place i did everything myself i laid my floors i got help painting my house i got help putting up my tv but this sound bar i did it myself i put my fireplace together myself i put my bed together myself i put my lights my lamps hung up my pictures, everything by myself, not because I wanted to be Miss Tough and Rough. Why pay somebody to do it if I could do it by myself? And one thing about growing up and having a stepfather who could do those things, he was an architect, so he knew how you know to do all of that and growing up going with him to different houses and stuff like that that he used to build. I was interested and I paid attention when he used to paint my my um, mother's place and I used to pay attention. My mother used to like leave him alone and my stepfather like, no, leave her alone, let her watch so she'll learn how to do it and she doesn't need no one to help her. She could do it herself. So I like that he did that for me. But now that I'm older and I can do that, it's like men are intimidated a lot by that. I had a boyfriend who me and him fought for an hour because I wanted him to put up a ceiling fan. And instead of him paying attention to the directions that came with the ceiling fan, he thought he could just put it up there himself. And I'm like, listen, I'm not ask, acting like I know what I'm doing. I'm reading instructions, the, look, the paper. But he fought me, no, it could go this way, no, it could go this way. So I had to sit down and collect my thoughts. And I was like, okay, how am I going to come at him where he's really going to pay me mind that I'm not acting like I know what I'm doing. So what I did was I said, listen, if I'm reading off of the instructions and if you think that you can put it up there that way, which is not going that way. If that sailor fan spins and you or I turn on the light and it comes down and starts, it is, we're dead. Do you really want to put it up your way instead of reading the directions? And when we turn it on, it comes flying at us. Think about that. So he was like, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. Because he was the type of person, he had a very hard time saying sorry. There are people out there, not only men, women too, I've, I've met my share, that have a struggle to say sorry. So he was like, you're right, you're right. So I, an hour, it took him an hour to listen to me. I had to put death, danger, were dying in the mix for him to pay me any mind. It's like, men, why? I mean, not all women. I, I can't generally speak on all women. I can just generally speak on me, Diana. It's not that I want to act like I know it all. I want to act like I could do it all or act like I'm Miss Tough and Rough because I know men are put on this earth to be providers, to be the strength, to be, you know, the structure. And I'll give you that. But if I could do it, what's the problem? Like, honestly, if I could do it, what's the matter with just letting me do it? What's the problem with letting a woman do it? 
if she can, sit back, relax, go drink you a beer, <laughs> go, you know, watch that sports. Let us paint for a minute, okay? You think that we're trying to be the man? Let's do a 50 50. In an hour, let me fit, fix what I gotta fix. Then I sit down and drink the beer, and you get up and you do it. Finish it off, top it off. We could do it that way, or we could do it together. Finish it faster. So we both can sit down and watch that sports and drink that beer. You know, I can't speak and say that's what other women want, but I I feel that that's what it should be, 50-50. And a lot of women do try to explain to you men that we want our relationships or friendships or any kind of relationship to be 50-50. It cannot always, we're not trying to always just be on 100. You know, everybody always say 100. No, you can't always be on 100. You need people, you know? So a 50-50, so men is like, cut us a break. We're not trying to be men. We just trying to show you, man, we can do it too. Because remember back in the days, they put us in the box where we just only had to cook and clean. Who's, I'm not saying that, you know, women don't want to be that domestic, but not every woman wants to be domestic. They forced us to be domestic. We didn't come out the womb and say, okay, we want to cook and clean and take care of a man. No. Back in the days, it was like when you were born, that's what you had to do. You were raised to take care of a man. And then once your man came, your parents, the man came and said he wanted her to be his wife. And they gave him two billy goats and some coins. And the wife was off taking care of the man. And it didn't matter how or She was like 14, 13. And the man could be like 32. Mm -mm. That's not our choice. Our choice is our choice now, you understand? And it's not like we don't need you. It's just let us make our choice of what we want and work with us. We work with you. We've worked with you from the beginning of time. Look how long it had to take before we was like, okay, now we can do it. Think about that. Look how long it took before we could do it. I know you don't like it, but cut us a break. We didn't, when we came out of our mother's womb, a manual didn't drop out behind it and was like, you have to be a wife. You have to be a mother. You have to cook and clean. No, that didn't come out of our mother once we came out. Once we came out, our mother taught us the basics. Talk, walk, eat. You understand? Behave. Not okay, we gonna prepare you to be the wife, the mother. No, not this generation. So, I mean, I hope this help. I'm not bashing men, I'm all for men. I'm all for men being a man. But it's not we're trying to be men, we're trying to be women who could do things. Right, do you want a lazy bitch? I don't want no lazy. I don't want no lazy man. Why would you want a lazy bitch? Why would you want a bitch to just sit there and watch you eating bonbons, watching you painting? That's boring to me. I want to get up and paint too. Let me paint too. So when when I get up.